Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new here. I recently did a series where I swatched out every single single pigment color in my watercolor palette and talked about what I liked about them, what I disliked, and which ones I would buy again if I was rebuilding my palette from scratch. And I thought it would be interesting to do the same thing, except instead of single pigment colors this time, this time we're going to do it with mixes. Lots of people refer to these as convenience colors, so I have many mixes in my palette and I have sorted them by what the first pigment is in the paint. So we're going to get into this and unlike last time where I started with yellow, this time we're starting with PW and working our way to yellow. Just to switch it up a little bit. So I'm going to label this sheet and then we're going to get into swatching. So our page is all labeled and as you can see, none of these colors look particularly white, but they all do have PW as their first pigment, and all of them have PW6, PW6.1, or PW19. So we're going to start with Kirataki Malachite, which is PW6, PG7, and PY3. I don't use this paint all that often, but that's purely because I don't love the Kirataki paints. They're an awkward size, they don't fit in my palette. And because they don't fit in my palette, they're never something I reach for. They live in their own tin, and I just sort of forget they exist. They'll probably be something I rehome in the next few months. I don't see the point in having something in my collection that I don't use. Yes, my collection is extensive, but I do try and use everything. This is Cool Safina by Izzy's Watercolors. We used to be simply Izzy. Um, it's PW6, PB15, and PR122. If you remember from the Reds video, PR122 is my favorite Panacrido Magenta. Currently, I only have the Cosmic Creations version of it, but it is lovely. I still just like this paper. I just, it has a weird texture, this paper. But, maybe I'll make it again. Um, in the size I like for these sort of videos. Beam Paints Milkweed is PW6, PB15.1, and PY74. PY74 is my favorite yellow. It's Buzzy Bee and by Cosmic and Beam Poplar Yellow. And they are just such fun colors. I think the really fun part about colors that start with the W is that they tend to be very pastel, but because they're mixed with so many other pigments, you still get like a bright, vivid color. Wisteria Gouache by Daniel Smith, technically it's a gouache, but it's like one of two gouaches I have, and I believe I swatched the White Knight's gouache. Not White Knight, Windsor Noon gouache with their set. So, PW6, PR122. I find it interesting that this is only white and quinacridone magenta. This is not what I would have, you know, thought this mix was. But it is lovely. Marengo by White Knights is PW6, PB7, and PB15. It's a very blue gray because it's got a PB15 in it. I do like it though, like it's a good, like, moody gray. It doesn't have like the crazy super granulating effect that you get with some grays, which is my preferred effect for a gray, but it's still fun. Beyond Indigo Lavender Mist. I love her paints. She's a lovely human being. This is PW6, PB37, PR12. PB29 and PR259. So, handmade paints, you sometimes, if they're a custom mix, you will get like five and six pigments. I tend to prefer between like two and four for my mixes. I find that any more than that can get a bit muddy, but she's great at her custom mixes and they always turn out really nice. Putty is another color from Beyond Indigo, and it's PW6.1 and PR101. I 
use this color a bunch like buildings but also like if I want to mute down a red without adding white or black to it like if I just or potters if I want something that's not potters but still is like a muted red peach haze by beyond indigo is next and it's pw 6.1 pr 101 py42 and pw6 it's got two different white pigments in it but it's such a pretty color it's sort of naples out yellow-esque but it's more peach undertoned and i actually prefer a color like this to a naples yellow naples yellow a jean brilliant number one um because it's just like, I find the other one's too orange, like it's got enough of a pinky undertone to it, but I don't find it too orange. I've grabbed the wrong urban group. Both Roman Small and Daniel and uh, Schwinke make urban grays and they are pretty similar. It is PW6.1, PBR29, and PB. PB29PY150. Is it 156? I didn't think it was. I thought it was 159. But it probably is 156. And then Wig by Addison and Zedwig. Wig. It's PW19 and PW6. It's one of my preferred whites. It's like got a creamier color to it. And I just enjoy it because sometimes you just need something white that isn't as pure white. So we'll let this dry and then we'll go through the colors. All right, this is dry, so let's go over it. If I were to replace this palette, what would I repurchase? I don't know if I'd repurchase Urban Grey. I've got so many other greys that I like more and are more fun when they granulate. I do really love Putty. It's like a more uh, muted and moody version of Potter's. Same with Lavender Mist. Like, I just love it. I don't know that I'd replace Peach Haze. I've got other colors that are similar to it that I reach for more often. Wig. I don't know. It uses a white that I don't have the single pigment for, PW19. That being said, I almost always reach for my Windsor Newton White Gouache these days. Wisteria Gouache, I don't know. I bought the tube as like trying out the Daniel Smith line because it was the only color I could get. And I can definitely get other colors of it now, and so I'd probably try other colors before I replace this color. That being said, I do love how the Daniel Smith wash reactivates from the pans. It reactivates nicer than the Windsor Newton one. Like, the Windsor Newton one still activates nicely, but the Daniel Smith one just activates so nicely from the pan. Bean Milkweed. I love it. It's like just an electric bright green. And it's not a color that I'd ever mix myself, but I do love having it in my palette. Cool Safina. This is a color I desperately tried to love. I think I've got like four different variations of this sort of color in my palette. And I still haven't found one that I absolutely love. Like I was hoping it would work well for skies. And it's just like slightly too opaque for skies. And you can water it down, but then you lose like the cool texture and it just doesn't work the way I wished it would work. Nothing's wrong with Izzy's paints. They're lovely. It's just the color is wrong for what I wanted it for. And then for the Kiritake one, one, not my preferred color. Uh, this was gifted to me. Two, I don't know that I'd repurchase Kiritake. They're a weird pan size, they don't fit in my palette, and because of that, I don't reach for them. I honestly don't know the last time I painted with them, and because of that, I don't know if... Yeah, I wouldn't repurchase that, actually, at all. And then we have White Knight's Marengo. On this paper, it's got a crazy granulation. Normally, it doesn't, but maybe that's because I've only ever used it on hot press. 
The issue is that it's white nights. They're incredibly hard to get currently. You've got to deal with the dilemma that they're made in Russia. And I've owned this pan for probably two and a half years at this point. I do like it. If I suddenly lost my entire palette tomorrow, would I go out and repurchase it automatically? No, there are other grays I'd buy first. But it is a lovely color if you can get your hands on it on the secondhand market. So I hope you enjoyed watching part one. This is going to be many parts. I think the first series was nine. I suspect this will be eight or nine videos. Because at least the blue section, I think blues is like 73 colors in it. So that might get split into two. So thanks for watching and let me know what your favorite mixes that include a white pigment are.